For the follow-up to Introspective, which would go on to sell over 4.5 million copies worldwide, the Pet Shop Boys stepped off the dance floor and looked to their analogue past and one of their earliest compositions, a song called Jealousy. This is like in IA2 or something, and Chris comes back from the weekend in Blackpool and he hands me, in a slightly self-conscious way, a cassette of this piece of music written on the piano. I didn't use to like playing too much on the piano because I felt that if I'd done it and I hadn't recorded it, it was gone, it was lost. The great thing that happened over our lifetime has been the use of computers and sequences and everything, so whatever you do is remembered. Because in the old days, of course, you'd have to write with manuscripts or whatever. I can't believe that I actually went to the trouble of <laughs> recording me playing the piano onto a cassette, but I obviously did. So back then, I must have um, thought it was worth recording, which I'm quite surprised about. So, so I wanted well, to play it to you or something. And it sounded, it's not actually a million miles on the record, really, and it sounded like Edith Piaf could sing it, which is what, that's what I thought. It sounded very dramatic. And I always think it sounds like it could be in French. You know, no, 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 no. But it sort of sounded like it appeared to me. And so I tried to think of the sort of words that someone like Edith Piaf might have sung. It was going to be on the first album, it was going to be on the second album. And finally, we recorded it for this album. We're looking at where music's at in 1990, which is very dancey, which we like. It's very sample-driven. Everyone's using the funky drummer loop on their records, inspired by the Stone Roses using them. Um, so we decide to go in a different direction, to go back to analog, old-fashioned synthesizers. How can you expect to be We have an idea of making a record that's not really dancey, that's more autumnal, that's more sort of moody, that almost follows on from King's, this track King's Cross. It's more a bit like that, because there is that side to us. And I don't know how we hit upon him, but we ask the producer Harold Faltermeyer from Munich, and we meet him and we like him. He's got all these fantastic old art synthesizers, you know, with wires that you plug in here and there. And, uh, we go to Munich in 1990 and make this record. And there was nothing going on in Munich. <laughs> and Germany hadn't discovered the rave revolution at this point. If it, if it had, I couldn't find it, and I did try looking. So it was just basically the, the beer hall. This must be Well, it wasn't all bad, though, I mean, because um, Harold Faltermeyer, he had a little um, 
little hut in his garden with, a, with his own beer tap and everything. And he used to make his own sausages. A bit worrying, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think anyone that's got their own sausage-making machine in the garden is a bit worrying. He's the only person we've ever met who had their own abattoir. Released in October 1990, the album Behaviour featured the UK top five single, So Hard. No, I wouldn't have had So Hard on this album, because I think it um, spoils the mood of the piece. When we first started to appear on Top of the Pops, everyone's having a party and there's streamers and spandau ballet looking really glamorous and it's, and so the Bet Shop Boys were not doing that and this was regarded as being boring, I've said it myself. But I thought the phrase being boring, I was struck by how musical it was and the little ing, ings on the end of the words and it was, so it was in my notebook. And I seem to remember in terms of the music, we also had, which is, is probably not what people would think would be inspiration, um, Stock Aiken and Waterman had become dominant in pop music and were sort of universally reviled by your kind of rock league types. Chris and I, as songwriters, people making records, were incredibly impressed by how they could churn out hit songs with strong ideas one after another in, in actually surprisingly varied styles. And, uh, and we were particularly obsessed by Better the Devil You Know by Kylie. I know what they used to do is they used to suddenly go up a semitone into the chorus and we thought, oh, that's good. So on this, this is the first song where we did that. So being boring, it goes up a semitone from the verse mm -hmm. into the chorus. Yeah. Should do that again. Yeah. When you're young, you find inspiration in anyone who's ever gone and opened up a closing door. She said we were never feeling bored because we were never In terms of the lyric, we're in the centre of the AIDS crisis at this point and my best friend from Newcastle, I'd been moved to London, he'd become a teacher, um, was diagnosed with AIDS when suburbia came out. So throughout the, the sort of imperial phase of the Patrick Boys, this very good friend of mine had AIDS and it was in 1989 he died. And so I wrote the lyric as a sort of memorial to him that we're, we're in Newcastle and then we move to London, and then the final line, the final verse rather, is, is now. Now I sit with different faces in rented rooms and foreign places. All the people I was kissing, some are here. This is sort of an autumnal sounding album behaviour. So I'm going to choose track five, which is called Only the Wind, which is a very, I think, a very beautiful song. It's an unusual lyric because it's kind of about a relationship between a man and a woman. And the man has hit the woman and he's feeling remorse and guilt. 
It's only the wind How it takes you by surprise Suddenly begins Then before you know it dies My hands are not shaking I don't touch a drop You must be mistaken I know when to stop When life is calm Having made the decision to make a slightly melancholic autumnal album, Behaviour, it had to our horror only sold two and a half million copies and we were feeling a bit down the dumper, as we used to say, and we still say. And also, there is a tendency throughout our career to react against the previous thing. And so having done the beautiful statement, we decided we want to write something very, very up, dance poppy, in a sort of modern pop idiom. And that's what we did. After a recording break of two years or so, the Pet Shop Boys returned in September 1993 with a new album called Very. And its bright and sunny sound came housed in a distinctive orange plastic CD case that reminded some of Lego. We decided that the CD case was boring and we could make this CD case the actual object. And the designer for this said tactile for the 90s. I mean, it's definitely tactile. Good packaging, though. It must have cost us a fortune. Did we, did we lose money on every copy sold? <laughs> no, we didn't. <laughs> Trying for packaging over content. <laughs> no, no, actually, that was a joke. That was a joke, everyone. Ask me why. I'll say it's most unusual. How can I even try to explain why today I feel like dancing, singing like lovers sing? This album is very, a bit of a statement, isn't it, of intent, that? And it's the only album in the UK that we've got to number one. It was number one for one week. That is, that's the, that's the amount of time we've spent the, in the, on the number one slot in the UK album charts, one week. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that Go West, which was quite an obscure Village People song, but it had that um, classical chord change of Packer Bell's Canon, which I thought would lend itself to a house interpretation. But also I thought that the lyrics, which back then, which were talking about a better way of life, and the context of the 90s, would take on a completely different meaning. And particularly when with Neil singing it, it would bring out a melancholy in the song. And so I thought you'd get that juxtaposition between uplifting dance and then melancholy of um, something that everyone was aiming for, this better, better world and better way of life that, that had been taken away. I think if I said this album is better than you think, um, I mean, God, who, who needs rock critics when you got me in the band? Um, um, we should have plastered that on the cover. Uh, I think what I would have meant by that was it's super, two stars. It's superficially a shiny pop album, but in fact, underneath that shiny exterior, 
is quite a lot of depth and as ever with Badger Boys angst. I mean, you've got astonishing songs like Dreaming of the Queen, which is a very unusual song, really. I put two anxiety dreams together. Someone having the classic anxiety dream, the Queen comes around for tea, and also you go outside and you're as you're naked, which are apparently two classic anxiety dreams. I thought, oh, that's a good idea for a song. The Queen said, I'm a ghost. A very strong lyrical idea. Love never seems to last. It almost writes itself out. However hard you try, and I replied that there are no more lovers left alive. So the track I would choose for further listening from Very would be Young Offender. It's very electronic sounding. I like the lyrics, Neil, on this one. Thank you. <laughs> You've done very well on that one. And we actually performed this live in one of our shows and we had a great friend of ours, Paul Tekel, made this film and we just um, looped some of the footage from that and I was um, particularly enjoyed. Well, this one was strong. I really enjoyed performing this. It's, also, it's quite ravey, it's quite acid -y, yeah. acid house and all of that stuff. It's also samples computer games. Well, we're, using, we're using sort of computer game mm. sounds in the background. Yeah. Towards the end of the very era, we suddenly decided to do a tour where we went to South America and Australia and also Japan and Singapore, I think. And we didn't come to Britain, I don't know why. It always amazes me that our commercial peak, which we had with Ferry, we didn't tour, but we just, but we did tour in Australia, Latin America and the Far East. Um, anyway, we, we did this tour of Latin America and we heard a lot of Latin American music and we had this musical idea what would it be like if you took Latin American rhythms and put them with the sort of donk 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 of synthesizers and also we'd been to, they used to have a Stonewall concert every year the Equality show it was called for the charity, the activist group Stonewall and we saw these Glaswegian drummers called Shibuma, which is a troupe of female drummers banging sound drums and we were kind of mildly obsessed by that as well. In fact, they're on several of the tracks on this. So we decided to make an album that makes Latin music with our kind of electronic music. It even has the main single, Servi de Rey, is a, is a Portuguese phrase. And that's the kind of linking thing that goes through the album. Come outside and see a brand new in your mind We'll go our way It's easy to believe Then here to stay But you won't find them standing in your way
Every now and then we rebel against ourselves. You know, all of our album titles had one word. We thought for the first time we might call us album Pitch Up Boys, That's The Way Life Is. Which is quite a nice title, it sounds a bit fatalistic. But for their sixth studio album, the Pet Shop Boys settled on the title Bilingual, released in September 1996. I've always thought maybe the album was too long, just just stuck a little bit more to the Latin theme. But I mean, I think it's got some, some very strong songs on it. I mean, it might be post-rationalising it, but this album is made at the height of Britpop in 1995. I don't know if we actually sat down and said, let's do an album that's the antithesis of Britpop. I think we thought, let's do an album that mixes Latin rhythms with European electronic music and see what it sounds like. And then you think, oh, as it happens, it's actually the antithesis of Britpop. Um, it's called bilingual. So it's sort of going against the grain of what's happening in British pop music. I'm Quite a loved up album this because mm. the song, it always comes as a surprise, is the most romantic ballad the Pet Boys mm. have ever recorded by, by quite a long chalk. Yeah. I think it's a really beautiful production and I, lo I like the song. I think it's um, the Pet Boys are sort of famous for being ironic or a bit camp or something. Actually, so many of our records are really heartfelt. And this is a very heartfelt statement of how I felt about someone at the time. I can't be cool Oh, no, Because I would say it's about this one. It's not as bad as you think, is it? <laughs> what was my quote? It wasn't. <laughs> it's better than you oh, think. Oh, that's right, okay. <laughs> it's better than you think. <laughs> it's not as bad as you think, this one. A lot of hope in the track before, which is my favourite track on this album. You found your love before, is it? How's it going? It comes knocking at your door. Oh, it comes knocking at your door. There you go, you see, there's a bit of hope there, which I like. A scintilla of hope. The 